Uh, it says that all signs point to imminent Israeli attack on Iran. It says Israel is preaching a credible military threat against Iran for years. What's happening that makes now the time to act on the threat? So we've talked about this for weeks about, of course, this uh, Israel saying we're going to basically take out facilities in Iran, uh, whether you are a part of it or not, speaking to USA and other countries, saying we're going to do this with or without your help. This is World War III type stuff. Uh, Dex, do you want to go over what happened here and, and why they think that this is imminent? So the saga of, of this... Is going. It's cha- it's rapidly changing. So there's a lot going back and forth. So what recently happened was the head of the International Atomic Agency, Rafael Grassi, met with Iranian officials and then issued a statement saying that it would be quote unquote illegal for anyone to carry out an attack on a nuclear facility. So this uh, really got uh, the Prime Minister uh, Benjamin upset uh and is so he's you know he responded that says it's an unworthy assertion and then he insinuated that maybe he was coerced to say that because he was in their country and and had to meet with them and and look at their facilities so um this notion that they're trying to make it illegal would i i don't know what it changes you know like whose legality uh you know would control that but um it's certainly at least a talking point in the public opinion that's coming out now, mind you, uh, last Friday, Mark Milley was in is meeting with them. Uh, before that we had the huge drills that they, we did the U S and is did together, which were all about, uh, going, uh, after the, the nuclear facilities. And then later this week, Lloyd Austin is supposed to do the same thing and meet with, um, with the, you know, the country of is in their, their country. So all of this is going on and it's certainly looking much more like things are moving forward. Um, and, but this one wrinkle that's thrown up here, I don't think it's enough to stop it, but it certainly is one that, uh, caused a, a bit of a kerfuffle between, you know, the prime minister and, uh, the statement coming out of the IAEA. So the more that we, and there's wars and rumors of wars, of course, but, uh, these two countries are more likely than any to have some sort of huge blowout because of their past and their history with each other. Uh, but with Iran to the store, that country now has shown at least evidence, and who knows, they can make any fake anything nowadays, but that they have these underground uh, missile bases. They also have underground airports. Uh, they can actually launch jets from underneath mountains. So for now, there was some talk on Twitter. Some folks were saying that is couldn't knock out those uh, unless they had certain U.S. supplies or these bunker busters that we haven't given is or something. But I believe Israel does have uh, these crazy bunker bucks, uh, bunker busters. And I swear we covered that like two or three years ago that they had these. So could they do that? Well, one thing I thought about is if you did bunker bust something like that, <clears throat> a base with all these missiles and explosives. I mean, would you, if it did get down there and go boom, would it blow up everything? And would it take a mountain out? Like I I think that would be an explosion that I I don't think anybody wants to see, but probably wouldn't want to miss or probably the whole world wouldn't miss it. Right. But as far as this goes, if you have information on this, if you are former or a current military and you know something that we don't and you want to correct us or tell us something that, of course, would help us, you know, figuring out how close this really is, let us know. Adam at MarfugalNews.com or Dex at MarfugalNews.com or both. And then Taiwan suspects Chinese ships cut islands' internet cables. So something seems like it is really, really happening here. You would think that if the internet cables get cut, which we've seen kind of these uh, dry runs, there was where all of the webcams went off on Taiwan like last year, or probably a year and a half ago or something like that. And people were really thinking like this is about to go down. Uh, there was a fire at a power plant that they said was, you know, had resulted in that. I wonder about this because this is pretty freaky. It says in the past month, bed and breakfast owner Shen Lin had to tell his guests that they couldn't provide them with the internet. 
Others living on Matsu, one of Taiwan's outlying islands closer to neighboring China, had to struggle with paying electricity bills, making doctor's appointment, or receiving a package. It says for connecting to the outside world, Matsu's 14,000 residents rely on two submarine internet cables leading to Taiwan's main island. It says the National Communications Commission citing that the island's telecom service blamed two Chinese ships for cutting the cables. It said that the Chinese fishing vessel is suspected of severing the first cable uh, some 50 kilometers or 31 miles out at sea. Six days later, on February 8th, a Chinese cargo ship cut the second it says NCC. Uh, Taiwan's government stopped short of calling it a deliberate act on the part of Beijing, and there is no direct evidence to show that Chinese ships were responsible. But still, you have to understand, most of the war games and simulations we've seen is that they would take the smaller islands first. And if they don't have an actual hard line to the island, that would make it a whole lot easier to cut communications. If they do something to the surface level, antennas, whatever, you know, radio comms that they have if, or knock out their power, then they won't be able to connect through landline and they won't be able to connect through radio. How fast can they replace these? And in that time frame, say it takes three months to replace it, that might be a sign that in the next three months or however long it takes to fix these things, that they might be trying to do this right now. Just saying. Uh, Dex, this is kind of al alarming. I mean, like, I guess they say it could be an accident, right? But one is an accident. What is it? Uh, sh f fool me once, shame on me. F fool me twice, shame on you. Or is it, uh, is it reverse? I think I got that. Reverse. I think it's I think you got it reverse, but it that's okay. Let's uh, let's talk about what what it would really mean. So if this was an accident, it would probably look like a ship had. Uh, decided to sit in a position, drop an anchor, and the anchor line dragged across and broke something. That would be a logical explanation. Uh, what other explanation does a ship have going through an area that is dragging the ground and cutting things as it goes? It's It's got to be. And so when you look at what happened here, the first ship they actually gave chase to. The authorities went after it, and they chased it all the way into internet, into uh uh, Chinese waters and they couldn't follow it anymore. So they don't know what happened there. Uh, but if they gave chase, that's, that's a sign that there may have been something else going on. Cause you would have thought they'd say, Hey, we're sorry. We were just anchoring and it was an accident and everybody would, you know, it wouldn't be a great thing, but it wouldn't be a, a, a you know, as bad as it, as it is, but for it to happen back to back on both lines, it almost seems like a test. This is this, in my opinion, could be a test run of using something and using a, a commercial vehicle, uh, like a ship, uh, a fishing vessel or something like that. So it's more inconspicuous. It's not a military ship going through that's able to do this uh, and see if they can get away with it and get out of there. And that's, a, that's exactly what happened. I don't know if that's, that's just my opinion. That's not the facts, but the facts are both were cut two different times back to back, uh, both from non-military ships, but were from uh, China. And one of them they gave chase to and uh, couldn't couldn't get to it before it got back into uh, China's waters. I do want to let you guys know this is really awesome. Uh, first of all, we'll talk about it in a little bit, but make sure to go over and check out the Energy tab now because there is a new product. We'll talk about it later. There is now a tactical uh, Energy Flex 1500 that was made with the U.S. Army and Air Force. So go check that out. We'll talk about that later. But first, EMP Shield. If you do want to protect yourself against... Uh, any kind of electromagnetic pulse, all three phases of an EMP are covered with this, uh, or a CME, this device can ground the signal in less than 500 trillion of a second before it's able to fry your devices. Uh, this can be put, there's different devices for different things. You can get one for your cars, your trucks, your motorcycles, your boats, uh, your generators, your gas generators, your solar generator, if, if uh, the Flex is the only one you can actually get it for, but... Um, again, you can also get these for even your ham radio. So if there's something that you want to protect, you can wire an EMP shield into it and it will protect it. Uh, this is uh, Keystone military tested. It's used by agencies like DHS, DOD, and of course now they're on the DEMSO team officially helping uh, the Texas grid. Go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Not only will you save our grandfathered in $50 off, but the great part about our discount is it stacks on top of any uh, sale that they're running. On top of that, you get to help our channel at the same time. We're independent. We don't have a multi-channel network. We've never done one. Um, and we are on our own. So thank you, Marfia, for helping us and for keeping us going 
Thank you. Are you only news I 